Hello, uh, my name is Asif. Today we are going to discuss about the IELTS speaking test, specifically the part one. Now, uh, we are not just going to go directly into the part one section. We are going to look at the general structure of the IELTS speaking test first, and then we're going to be speaking about the part one, and then we'll do some discussion on the part one as well. Now, this is the basic structure of the IELTS speaking test. So as you can see, there are three parts to the speaking test. So here we have a bunch of information here, and then we have for part one, part two, and part three. So speci uh, specifically speaking, we have the time, the context, form, more information, examples, and tip. Now for part one, it's four to five minutes. For part two, it's three to four minutes. And then for part three, we'll have a look at it. Um, there is a blank. We have a bit of an exercise to do, or a bit of a work to do. Now, in part one, uh, again, there is a blank here, but we are just going to go through the basic information first. So for part one, the form is that this section, it's basically question and answer part, where you're asked some questions basically about yourself, and you have to answer those questions. The first question group is always about work, study, or hometown, or a lot of question topics which are mainly or primarily about you. Let's say, for example, food, holidays, hobbies, travel, uh, work. It can be related to your interests. It can be movies, music, etc., etc. So there are lots of topics that um, the examiner can ask you questions about. Now, for part two, the time is anywhere between three to four minutes. And the topic is primarily related to everyday and concrete topics. Now, generally, what everyday and concrete here means, concrete basically means very specific topics. For example, describe a memorable journey you have made. So that is the concrete aspect, which is being very specific. And the everyday aspect basically uh, means that it is going to be related to you, but also it's going to be related to your everyday life. It's not going to be something... Uh, which you will not have any idea about and the topic is basically related to your everyday life. Now for part three, this is more towards a discussion, uh, longer form um, discussion type questions where the topic follows loosely based on uh, the topic that you will be discussing in part two. So it is not always a necessity that, uh, I mean, generally what happens is that the topic is not directly connected, but it's it picks up from the part, two's, uh, part two topic. And also, you have to generalize rather than talk about your personal experience. So this part three is somewhat of just the, uh, somewhat of an, um, you can say it's just a, a opposite of part one. So here it's more personalized. Here it's a bit more general out of, um, yourself right so that is what the part two and part three uh, part one part two and part three is the structure is of the uh, entire speaking test however as you can see there are blanks here and what we are going to do is we are going to try and figure out what exactly goes in these blanks so at this point what I want you to do is I want you to match a to J with these blanks here or rather um, you, you should try and do the small exercise where you want where you need to put these options or these sentences in these blanks so I'd like you to take uh, a pause or I would like you to take a screenshot or pause the video if you want and try to use or fill in the blanks uh, in the previous slide with these options so I'm going to go ahead and um, skip forward. You can just pause the video right here and then we'll meet back once you have done finishing the exercise. So you had to fill in the blanks with the options and here are the answers. You see these ones, so H, B. So for context, let's go over the, um, let's go over the uh, uh, part one, part two and part three, the missing options. So for context in part one, everyday and concrete, right? It's almost similar and that's absolutely fine. No problem here. Then we have for more information, you can say 
that this is a question answer part the first question group is always of course you we know about this now the option here says let's talk about music what sort of music do you like listening to as i was mentioning earlier it can talk about music it can talk about movies it can talk about weather a lot of things also try to answer with two or three sentences that is the tip right here so you should not uh, just answer with just one sentence or one word try to answer in at least two or three sentences so that at least there is some sort of continuity now for part two the missing options here for example are this is the long term in this part you must speak alone there is one minute preparation time two minutes to talk and one or two follow-up questions at the end so um, I, I believe you already know this so this is uh, a lot of people generally or commonly or famously known as the cue card so here you get the topic and in this topic you'll have uh, for this topic you'll have one minute time and you'll have to speak on that topic for one to two minutes and you'll get one minute time to prepare yourself then we have uh, for more information you have the topic card has only one topic on it with three bullet points and one extra point to talk about often the topic is a descriptive or a narrative one now you will not really get a topic where you will have to uh, you know speak about something that you don't particularly know about so you should not worry too much about it also the the other thing that you should remember is that you cannot change this topic this topic um whatever topic you get it, you are you are stuck with that topic so you will have to uh, make up the story if you uh, are not particularly familiar with the topic however that that's very unlikely um then for tip we have uh, try to connect your talk with linking devices for example after uh, after that despite now of course this is kind of like um, um uh, what should i say um this is common for all or the um, entire uh, entirety of the speaking test you should try and connect your uh, sentences as much as you can with all um, uh, cohesive devices or discourse markers as much as you can so that the fluence and coherence aspect of the speaking test remains uh, good then we have for part three the time is four to five minutes but again remember the entirety of the speaking test is um, kind of like it's um, um, specifically on the examiner's discretion where, how long this speaking test is going to be and of course you see four to five minutes three to four minutes uh, four to five minutes so it, it will vary in time for candidates to candidates then we have more general and abstract as i was saying a little while earlier that part one is kind of like an opposite of part three so here you have everyday and concrete and very personalized but here it's more general and abstract then we have in this part you may have to compare the past present speculate about the future express and support opinions so as this is more general and abstract you have to speak about a lot of things um, in general and most importantly they are broad answers so for example you see a tip here which says two or three sentences here you will have to say uh, more than three sentences in fact you have to say anywhere between five to eight sentences uh, where also you have to give examples and uh, you know work with uh, different uh, tenses and stuff like that also you said uh, you, as you can see examples right here you said more people travel <coughs> more and further <coughs> today than in the past why do you think that is now you see there can be follow-up questions so this is an example of a follow-up question so uh, as you can see right here you said more people travel more um, and further today than in the past so why do you think that is so this is an example or a classic example of a, a follow-up question now generalize rather than talk about your personal experience another tip um, as i was mentioning a little earlier so this is really not about you yes of course some questions you might get where you have to gen uh, uh, personalize it yes of course but generally it's going to be more of a uh, generalized um, response now for part one let's do a bit of an exercise so as you can see there are a bunch of questions right here for example do you enjoy sports and then at the end uh, or let's say after the questions here you have um, a few options or a few uh, structures of answers that you can um, approach for example my f um, no I hate sports because something 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 for example something 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 for example it says here no I hate sports because 
I was always bad at them. For example, I was always the last person in races at school. Now, of course, this is just one sentence. You can make it into two sentences if you like. And this is just to give you um, kind of like an example to start with. For example, what's your favorite animal? Um, an example can be, my favorite animal is a dog uh, because they're very cute. I find them uh, very cute and adorable. Um, and I am a do um, um, I love uh, different types of dog breeds. For example, uh, I love huskies and golden retrievers. And in the future, I plan to get uh, a golden retriever if I get an opportunity. So that's one example. Now, of course, there are many different ways in which you can approach this question. Now, all the um, structures that you see right here, it's not a necessity that you have to attempt it like this. This is more of a kind of like a uh, uh, example for you to get uh, used to. However, I would recommend try different approaches to the same question. So I would like you to pause the video right now and um, practice these questions and also if you want uh, you can leave your responses in the comments below and i can check them and maybe give you some feedback on um, the your answers so i'm going to uh, you should pause the video, video right now and see you in a bit all right excellent so i believe you have practiced all of these questions and i hope uh, it went well uh, please let me know down in the comments below how did your um, answers go and what answers you came up with. I would love to see them in the comments below. Now, let's do a um, little bit more practice. Here are some other questions that you can practice. Now, this is more like a game uh, that you can play with your uh, partner if you have one speaking partner where you can ask them to speak about a certain box. And if they can speak for 20 seconds, then they win this box and then uh, they ask you to speak about another box and if you can speak for 20 seconds you win that box and goes on like that now if you don't have a speaking partner what i would recommend is use these use these questions for yourself and try to speak for at least 20 seconds uh, for example you know uh, let's say how do you usually communicate with your friends so try to speak about this question for at least 20 seconds, um, you know, using uh, examples, uh, connecting it with yourself, all of these things, yeah, all of that we have discussed. So try to use these uh, questions, practice these questions, and again, leave your answers in the comment sections below so that I can at least check uh, your answers and maybe provide some feedback. So yeah, again, I'm, I'm going to pause the video and you can practice this leave your uh, answers in the comments and then we'll meet back again all right excellent so i believe you have practiced all of these questions either by yourself or with a speaking partner here are some problems that test takers generally have with part one so for example one can be nervousness now generally um, i think this is quite common because it's a test nonetheless so people are generally nervous about, you know, uh, speaking in front of an examiner. But again, you have to control your nervousness as much as you can. Uh, you know, taking deep breaths, um, calming your nerves, uh, just, you know, repeating to yourself that it's going to be okay. I'm, I'll do well. I'll do well. So a lot of things can, um, can be done to, I guess, uh, combat nervousness. But again, it's specifically... Um, um, I would say it's a, it's a very personal thing how you handle <laughs> nervousness and uh, the other thing is too short an answer now of course as I mentioned earlier you should try to speak for at least two to three, uh, three sentences bare minimum if not that's going to be uh, considered as too short I would um, recommend you speak for um, at least uh, three to four sentences if you're using examples if you're e exemplifying your um, um, options or sentences of course very well done um, if not if possible try to give an example the next one is too long an answer now if you're going on for too long i mean more than four or five sentences this can 
often be considered as rehearsed because generally if um if people have rehearsed it they know and they will be speaking longer and the examiner will know it so stick to uh, a good pace and a good uh, length i would say so two um three four five sentences at the ma uh, max i would say uh, what makes a good part one answer so answering with more than one sentence of course two or three is good supporting your answer with a reason supporting your answer with an example all that we have discussed right now so um there you go guys here are all um the um i would say speaking part one discussion in the following uh, subsequent videos i'll be discussing about part two and we'll do or try to do some uh, similar practice related to part two as well and part three as well so i hope this was helpful and uh, do let me know uh, if you have any questions uh, down in the comments i'll try to respond to them and see you in the next one all the best and keep practicing bye bye